guys, welcome to Herding Little Cows. So today we're going to make some bran muffins, but we're also just going to chat. So I'm making these bran muffins. The original recipe calls them six week refrigerator bran muffins. I don't know exactly where I got the recipe. Um, my friend Mary um, gave me the recipe recently, another, like the same recipe, but she gave it to me recently because she knows how great they are for large families because this recipe makes 48 muffins. Um, for our family, that's two breakfasts because there are eight of us in the house that eat, and so that's three muffins a piece, and we'll usually have some fruit with it. Um, if I make it with eggs or something, it lasts a little longer. Oh, you're okay. This little guy wants a nap, so he'll probably fall asleep on me. So these muffins last in the fridge. We make them, and then I'm able to put them in the oven in the morning to have hot muffins. They're also really good if you microwave them to make them a little warm to add butter to. Um, like after you've cooked them to warm them up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make some buttermilk. I'm going to be sharing a lot of tips that I use for things um, that are substitutions in recipes today because if you don't know, it's the first day of April. Not April Fool's joke, we're all locked in our houses, not going out for supplies other than groceries and medical care. So I'm trying to use up the stuff I have rather than going back to the grocery store. For anybody watching, I do have enough food. We're just trying to make sure certain things last long enough like butter, I like to put on the inside of the muffin, so I'm going to use something else for the butter in the recipe. So first thing we're going to do, I need a quart of butter. So how we're going to do that is I'm going to measure out four cups of milk. And the proper way to measure into a liquid measuring cup is to measure and then get down like this and look and all of that stuff. But with the baby on me, we're not doing that. So this is two cups. You need a total of four cups because that will be one quart. This is for buttermilk. You can buy buttermilk at the store, um, but I never buy it because it's expensive and then I don't use the whole thing for, it's in, like, I don't bake with that much buttermilk. So here's another two cups. And then we're going to add a few tablespoons of lemon juice. The lemon juice will make it curdle a little bit which is buttermilk or sour milk. It's curdled milk. It gets too loud, I'll hand them off. So we put a few tablespoons of the lemon juice in there. And now, my husband's standing off to the side. If you can put the milk away, everything else is fine to stay out for a while. So we're gonna let that sit in the bowl while I do the rest of the measuring. So that was my first um, frugal tip is lemon juice or vinegar added to milk can make buttermilk. Next frugal tip. These recipes, this recipe calls for four cups of bran. Um, I've seen them called bran buds. They're little pieces of bran. And four, uh, sorry, two cups of bran flakes. So a total of six cups. Well, what we do is we take bran flakes and we smush them a little bit and then measure them like that. Next cheap tip. I found out that a box, this is our local store, Hannaford. So Hannaford sells bran flakes. This isn't that. They sell bran flakes for like $4 a box. Same size box of raisin bran is $2 a box. And it works out great in this recipe. So I just bought the raisin bran, so we will have raisins inside our um, muffins, which adds nutritional benefit to it. So it works out well. So like I said, I need to hold six cups of Bran flakes. That's probably really loud on the camera. I'm sorry. Real life cooking is loud. And if you hear my kids come out, they're sitting in the other room listening to Odyssey, which is a radio drama. Can we take out the other room and smash it up a little bit so it's not quite so loud? There's my sister. So, <laughs> um, Adventures in Odyssey is a radio drama that has a Christian storyline behind it. Um, they've been going on since, I think, the early 80s um, that people have listened to it. I didn't listen to it as a kid, but I know a lot of people my age that did listen to it as a kid. Um, my family just didn't know about it. But right now, Odyssey is doing a free 30-day trial that you can sign up for at witsend.org, W-H-I-T-S-E-N-D dot O-R-G. Forgot what I was spelling. Um, so my kids have been listening to those episodes. So they're all playing Uno in the other room and listening to that. So we have the four cups of buttermilk. We're going to do our six cups of bran flakes. 
out. Try not to rip the bag so they all fall out. I do that regularly too. Oh, and for everyone who liked my um my apron the other day, I need to remember to wear it more often because I tend to spill things on myself. But today with a baby in arms, it's not gonna happen. We just make messes here in the kitchen. Okay, assistant, that's all I should do. Assistant's gonna go do the schoolwork. So I need a little bit more. So we're gonna do a total of six cups of smashed up plates. In there. And then we also need oh. two cups of boiling water. So I'm going to step way back. That had boiled right before we turned on the video. And I'm going to go grab a spoon. Forgot that important step. They're adjusting lighting. So you can see little lights going on and off. They're trying to figure that out. So, like I said, we had four cups of buttermilk, we had six cups of bran flakes. And then we had two, sorry, yeah, two cups of boiling water. And I don't know if you can see in the bowl, it's gonna be hard to show you, but there are little, here, pick it up a little bit. Do you see those little white things on top of the bran flakes? That's the curdled milk that is the replacement for the buttermilk. You will not taste it, it does not taste bad. It's used to break down the bran flakes into a muffin texture. So if you can see what that texture is right now, I'm now gonna fill some buckets while I talk to you and let this sit for 15 minutes. There we go. So we are all stuck in the house for long periods of time um, because of this. So the question is, what are you filling your time doing? Um, one thing that we are working on is doing some organization. Um, we went out to the garage the other day. For those who don't, no, we live in my parents' house. My parents had this house built the year we got married. So it was a long time ago. We got married in 2002. And my dad passed away six years ago now, in a couple months, it'll be six years. So my mom decided this house was a little too big. So we moved into this house to live with my mom um, right before Abigail was born. So we've been living in the house for a little over five years now. And we shared the house with her for the first four years that we lived here. Three and a half. Three and a half. She lived, we won't move the camera, but behind me is a wall that separates. This is a double white trailer. So the house, the double white trailer, that's what it's was called. Um, the wall behind me separates um, me from what was her side of the house. So she had a big bedroom and a bathroom and then the living room. And then we all shared the kitchen and we had two bedrooms at the end of the house. Well, about three and a half years ago, she decided she wanted to spend a little more time with the other grandkids, which was hard for the sickness. And um, when this little guy was born, some of the family members were dealing with whooping cough, some were dealing with hand, foot, and mouth, just things, not this little guy, sorry, one of the other little guys. And we didn't want to have that stuff around. Um, a newborn, of course. And so my mom decided it would be best if she built a little house in the backyard. So we now have access to that living room, which we use as a living room, and the bedroom, which is now the girl's bedroom. And we are able to um, have grandma and visit with her as often as we want, because she lives right in the backyard. Um, not so much during this time. <laughs> but um, when, when it's normal life, she comes up and eats every meal with us. Um, but she's able to then have other grandkids there when they're not feeling well. She can have them over and stuff. So, um, where was that story going? Oh, so when um, all of this was built and we moved in, she then had another garage built here on the property. And so we have used part of her garage and have just kind of gained things like bicycles and toys and all of those. So we've been cleaning out things, seeing what things we actually use and what things we can move. So Mark is making our garage into our tool, um, our place to keep all the tools because they kind of all wandered over into the other garage too. And we will be cleaning up that garage. So that's something we've been doing. And they cleaned the basement the other day. Um, 
some of the other things we're doing is as a family, we are reading through our Bible reading plan that the church is doing, which is um, they're doing about a chapter of Bible a day for five days a week. And they started in Genesis and they're just reading through. Well, we had started before them and sometimes we do two chapters. So we are the end of Leviticus now. Um, we just have a couple more chapters left. But we've also been studying out 1 Corinthians 10 through 15, 10 through 14. We read 10 through 14 the other day. Um, and just what is church supposed to look like? Um, in this time where we're all stuck at home, missing our church services, what are the things that we should be doing um, at home? Because worship doesn't just happen in church. It happens every day of our lives. Everything we do should be because of our um, love for God and our worship towards him. So, like, I make this recipe because it helps my family um, to have food to eat. I'm supposed to be providing for my family, um, you know, through being able to eat well and stay clean and the different things of taking care of a house. Um, so everything I do is because I love God, or at least that's what it should be. And that's something you need to re-examine often. The things you're doing, are you doing them because you want to glorify God, or is it in some way glorifying yourself? Um, not that everything you do to glorify God is a bad thing for you. I'm not saying, that, like, I enjoy these muffins and I feed my family. Um, but is your main goal to glorify God? I want my kids to grow up to love and obey God, and I also teach them because I want them to be good members of society and to be able to hold down a job and raise a family and teach their own children and all of those things. The main objective is so that they can learn to know and love God. But we're also doing it so that, you know, they have an education. So just many different things. So anyway, so one thing you can be doing at home is looking at what is worship and are you doing it on a daily basis with your family? We spend time in God's word almost every day. I can't say we do it perfectly, but we that's our goal is to do it every day. So I'd say we do it um, most days of the week and we sing songs. Sometimes that's turning on some YouTube videos and singing along to Keith and Kristen Getty is one of our ones we like or Seeds Family Worship or Songs for Saplings. Um, things that will get God's word and God's um, ideas into our mind. Oh, sorry. And we also then read God's word and discuss it as a family. And because we've been doing it since the kids were little, we usually spend about an hour or more a day, he's smiling at his daddy off camera, um, an hour or more a day discussing the Bible. And because it's been something we've always done with the kids, um, they have the attention span to do that. So if you need to, start small, but know that you don't have to keep it at just 10 or 15 minutes. Um, kids do learn to sit and listen and participate. We don't have the kids just sit there and listen. We ask them, what did you learn from this? What questions do you have? How can we teach you these biblical truths? While also teaching the older children where it might be above the little ones' heads, they're still learning. So we've been studying what church worship looks like. And really, we should all reevaluate why we're missing church so much during this time. Are we missing it just because we want to see friends? Because we... I have friends that don't go to church with me. I can't see them either right now. But that's not what makes church. Church isn't about being with friends. It's about worshiping with others, learning about God with others, and being able to take things from each other. Teaching, not take things like stealing, but <laughs> listening to someone else's teaching and you being able to teach and sharing all of that. So look for ways while you're stuck at home to be able to do that. I will be right back. I'm right over here. I'm just grabbing something. So, I realize I don't have a paper towel. Or a towel. Okay. Here we are. We're back. So, that's another thing we're doing. It's just really studying out what worship is. We're also working on some school. Um, I know different people are in different stages with this, whether their kids were in school or were homeschooled and what it looks like, whether dad's home or not, but considering our schedule is pretty much the same because daddy's been out because of disability. Um, our schedule looks pretty much the same. So on the days we can, um, when it's raining out and stuff, we stay home and we're really just um, pushing the academics 
because on the days that it's nice, we're spending more time outside. Not that we don't do school on those days, we just do less on those days. Um, some days we'll get, you know, three or four days worth of history done on a rainy day and be able to put less emphasis on it on another day and still get through our curriculum. Different video on homeschool because um, we're a little untraditional. So, um, there's something else I was going to mention. Oh, we've been working on just different character qualities with kids, which I've been talking about in other videos also. So, we are now going to go and do the next part of the recipe. Oh, after I load the flour bucket. So, things are hard to find right now at the stores. Um, I've heard I have not been out. We've been sending out just who's necessary to go to the store so I can stay home with the kids. But, just a little um, side note here. Please don't judge people you see at the store without knowing their story. Um, for our family, I have older girls who can help us with um, doing shopping and things. Virginia now can drive. We choose to um, go to the store with her just because there are crazy people in this world and we don't want her being taken advantage of. But we can't go to the store like a traditional family because of Mark's um, neurological issue. He can't drive. And so Virginia drives him to the store and they go to the, in together so that Mark can um, just make sure that Virginia is safe. Um, and I know that might seem overprotective, but we live in a crazy world. And Virginia needs to make sure that daddy is able to be okay. Because if he starts having a good time, he needs someone to help him back to the car. So my mom was out at the store the other day. She said that she saw a family with two young kids and mom and dad and shouldn't people stay home. Like my mom wasn't being judgmental. She was just telling me what happened. But I've heard people say that people like that should stay home and just send one person into the store. But sometimes that's not an option. If I had just little ones, like if I had just Malachi and Uriah, Uriah's two and a half, um, I would either need to take them to the store with me or I would need to take Mark and them to the store with me because Mark can't watch the kids um, because of neurological disorder. We never know when it's going to happen. So just be careful if you're judging people as you walk through the store, seeing what they're, oh, seeing what they're buying too. We feed eight people three meals a day. We are not taking advantage of the um, food programs at the school and stuff. So all the food that's coming into the house is things that we've had to go purchase at the store. So when we go through the store and it's a limit of two dozen on the eggs, um, that lasts us just a little more than a breakfast if we're having eggs for breakfast. So just think um, when you see a rounded over cart that it might be a family who's either shopping for other people or just shopping for their own family in their house. I saw a video of one of the people that I like to watch the other day and they normally shop once a month and they have 10 kids, so that makes 12 people in the household. And they have to buy larger amounts because their one day worth of food is more, like that one day is more than a single person's whole week worth of meals. So just think of it that way. Try not to be judgy of the people you're seeing. And toilet paper, I don't know why some people have carts full of toilet paper. I don't understand that. But when we go to Sam's Club and buy one of the big packages of toilet paper, because our family uses toilet paper because there's a bunch of us living in the house that are home all day long. So that's my little, my little spiel. So this is, so I let this sit for 15 minutes now. So thank you for staying with me. Um, the next step is three cups of sugar. I know that seems like an awful lot, but remember this makes 48 muffins and I'm actually going to cut it down to two and a half cups of sugar. I think I've done it as low as two, but I don't remember right now. So we're going to do two and a half cups. So one, a lot of recipes you can reduce the sugar to this is a half cup three four five while that is saving a little money because sugar does cost money sugar is fairly cheap and so i don't know the numbers right off the top of my head i'll try to put that in the comments below how much this recipe cost with the changes that we made but I'm just going to mix that sugar in. So that was, if the recipe calls for three cups of sugar, I did two and a half cups. We are now going to do one cup of shortening. So I'll tell you, when everything is good and we've got plenty of money and plenty of ability to find things in the store, I put one cup of butter, so that's two sticks, 
of butter in with the boiling water so that it can melt while that all sits for the 15 minutes. But because we're trying to just watch what we're purchasing to make sure that we have the butter we need in the future in case we don't have it at the store, um, I'm going to do another trick. So you can replace butter for oil in most recipes, as long as it's not cookies, because cookies, things that need to, uh, that spread will spread differently. Um, and this recipe actually calls for shortening. I don't typically use shortening, but you can replace butter half with um, applesauce. So this recipe calls for one cup of butter or shortening. I'm going to do a half a cup of oil. And then we're going to do a half a cup. This is extra light tasting olive oil. And we're going to do a half a cup of applesauce. I get low applesauce. Hold on. Hey, helper, can you help me button this? I should probably my shoulders. We're just going to put his head.
sometimes I'm afraid I grabbed a tablespoon into it instead of a teaspoon, but that was a teaspoon. So then I usually just use my finger and mix up the baking soda a little bit um, into the flour just to make sure that I'm not going to have clumps of baking soda in the rest of the food. There we go. And then we're going to mix this. So after I get this all mixed, um, I will put it in the fridge, but tomorrow morning we will um, grease the muffin cups. Um, we use a spray oil on top of the muffin cups, and we've got one big pan that does 24 muffins, and it cooks at 375 for 20 minutes. How we test these to see if they're ready is we poke down on the top of the muffin, and if it springs back up, um, they're done. So. So this recipe is really good. It feeds lots of people. As I said, the ways that we save money in this recipe are making buttermilk rather than buying buttermilk, um, using oil and applesauce in place of the butter. I don't know, but butter's been getting more and more expensive recently, even before this whole thing happened. And using the raisin bran instead of the bran flakes. So I hope this recipe um, is something that will be useful for you guys. And I will link in the description the price breakdown of it um, so that you can see exactly how much this recipe cost us. So thank you for joining Green Little Cows.